Late Night Health continues uh, with our guest, uh, Gay Dillingham. Uh, she's a producer, director of a film called Dying to Know. The, um, the relationship, the study of the relationship between Ram Dass and Timothy Leary. We were talking while we were taking our break about drugs in general. Uh, are psychedelic drugs legal today, Gay? No, they are Schedule One, which is the highest penalty. Um, and there is some acceptance for research that's been going on at some of the different universities. Um, so, uh, for that purpose, they can be. But it's um, no, you can still be put in prison, unfortunately, for uh, these mushrooms and LSD and so forth. So, John Hopkins, there's a great um, article that summarizes this all by Michael Pollan in terms of what research is, has been done and. Uh, called The Trip Treatment, and it was in The New Yorker. Um, hmm. but it's a good summary, and he's now writing a book. And you, you told me that, uh, that, that I guess you read uh, a, a story or, or did an interview with a woman who was an alcoholic and was given... Yeah, for the Hefter Institute, who's another group that funds a lot, privately funds a lot of this very cutting-edge research. They were looking at um, alcohol addiction, and this particular protocol was therapy along with two psilocybin sessions and um, a, a, a big enough dose um, that was, you know, the, the people were really prepared ahead of time, a lot of therapy beforehand. But the interviews they asked me to do with one of the subjects was so beautiful. I mean, this middle-aged um, and middle-class woman with two children was able to really look at her alcoholism from a completely new level. Like, why did she even start drinking in the first place? Where did she stop loving herself and kind of falling asleep? And so it became less about the alcohol and more about finding herself. That was the kind of the expanded awareness and consciousness of her own mind and heart that these sessions gave her, which was, you know, it, it, you know and I had done the interview many, many months later. So it's not the kind of therapy where you have to have a daily pill or, you know, some kind of ongoing help. Right. And, um, you know, I mentioned... Ha, have you yourself tried any of the mushrooms or the psychedelic drugs? Well, I mean, they are still considered Schedule One. I will say that um, I, uh, in in the past, um, when I lost my brother when I was young, um, died when he was only twenty, oh and my. Uh, that really kind of brought me to my knees and helped me start kind of waking up a little earlier in my life than I would have otherwise. But. Um, Really, it was devastating, and uh, uh, so that's when I learned death is not a part of our culture. That's when I started seeing that part of our, our um, warped lens. And then after that, at some point, I did do intentional sessions with psilocybin that really helped me, m you know, move through that grieving. Uh, so yes, I have, and it's been a medicine for me, and... Um, you know, I I think that we do need to look at this differently, and it should not be a Schedule One drug where people are put in prison. I think uh, I remember reading that um, uh, Timothy himself uh, said that this is a medicine. It's not something that you can you can take and in, in, should take or use in your backyard. Right, and and like anything, anything can be abused. I, I suppose you know, um, sadly, but. If used well and, and consciously, um, and that's why I think we need a lot of education around all of this, because we have a drug epidemic in our culture, both, you know, recreational and pharmaceutical, and we're losing more and more kids in this fragile rites of passage part of their life, and we've got to start being there for them as elders and, you know, helping them through these big questions and how to, if they are going to use these things, how to do it more consciously, conscientiously. And... And maybe under under uh, guidance, if you and guide, will, yeah, right? Yeah, Wouldn't that that help. Uh, we only have about a minute and a half left. Uh, you've had, uh, I mean, the film is narrated by Robert Redford. The film again is called "Dying to Know," narrated by Robert Redford. If I had to lose a narration job, it may as well have been to Robert, uh, you know, Robert Redford, and. Um, I was that was a joke, gay. Eh? Uh, <laughs> um, and it's uh, there's a, a 
Southern California, Los Angeles premiere is coming up on June 17th. Um, there's more information about that by going to latenighthealth.com. Do you have a website uh, as well? Yeah. It's dyingtoknowmovie.com. Dyingtoknowmovie.com. And we're going to have Gay back again. And we'll talk more about uh, her environmentalism as well as uh, her, uh, you know, her fascination with the lives of Ram Dass and Timothy Leary. Gay, thank you very much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much. I have one quick little thing because since it is late night health. Yes. Um, I just wanted to let the the listeners know that Dr. Andrew Weil is prominently featured in the film. Uh, oh, that's a I'll good, leave good that point. That is a mystery as to why. Good. Hey, we're out of <laughs> time. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. Late All Night right. Health continues.